and the surrounding areas. That is our job. That is what we are supposed to be doing. And so tonight, brothers and sisters, I want to welcome you, those that you're about to uh, sit down and to listen to the word of God. We welcome you. We welcome those that are online. We welcome those that are sitting here tonight. And so we get right into the message. Tonight's message, brothers and sisters, visiting friends, is entitled, The Last Animal Encounter, Part 2. Last night, we looked at the first beast of Revelation, Chapter 13, that will bring about the mark of the beast. We talked about that at length. We have been talking about that since the last two weeks and going into the third week. And so tonight, we want to bring uh, this part, at least this part, to a close when we look at these beast powers. And the Bible tells us, I've been giving us some wonderful truths for our time. It has been preparing us for what is to come. The Bible says that the greatest test of mankind will come in our generation the bible tells us that we can be prepared and we can be prepared in god we can be prepared be prepared in jesus christ god loves you jesus loves you and he wants to get you ready for what is about to come before we go to heaven we have to go through hell we will have to go through hell and so tonight the church's work is to get you ready to get you spiritually ready to get you mentally ready and to get you even physically ready and so tonight brothers and sisters as we look at tonight's message the last animal encounter part two last night we looked at the mark of the beast and we we talked about what it was and the implications going forward the bible tells us in revelation 14 verse 9 through to 10 it says and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of god which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb this is very serious this is very serious brothers and sisters and so i am risking i am risking this idea of hurting people's feelings so that you will not be destroyed in hell people's feelings are going to be hurt that has nothing to do with truth in you accepting truth the truth is designed for your feelings to be hurt because the idea jesus wants to bring you out of error jesus wants to bring you out of error you know the bible tells us that jesus at his first part of his ministry was doing such a wonderful job they loved him they did everything he spared he, sp he spoke the right words and everything and all of a sudden when he spoke a particular truth the bible says many left him and never came back even jesus himself with the best of intentions with the best of the word he said some things that people did not like and the bible says he had to ask his disciples will you also leave me will you also leave me my job our job pastor clark's job is not to make people feel good all the time it doesn't work like that and so i'm addressing even people who are online who are in the hearing of my voice thinking that i am preaching against their churches and preaching against sunday I am not preaching against Sunday. I am preaching against the Vatican. I'm preaching against Rome. I'm preaching against the principles of error. And if that means your feelings are going to be hurt, then so be it. So be it. My job is to preach the gospel and to show you truth. That is my job. And yes, I know that some people might not come after tonight or come after last night. Because what? All that we wanted to hear was the wonderful things and the good things that keep us together. Look here. My job is to create Abel's, not Cain's. It's to create Abel's, not Cain's. 
All Cain wanted to do was praise God and hear the good messages and hear the wonderful messages. But whenever time he was supposed to respond to truth, he rejected God. The reason why we treat God like this is because we don't know what hell really is all about. Yes? Listen to this. It says here, brothers and sisters, we talked about the beast that came up from the sea and the beast... Tonight, we're going to talk about the beast that comes from the earth. These two beasts will work together. As a matter of fact, the first beast will control the second beast. The Bible says in Revelation 13, 12, it worked. That's the second beast. Worked for the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And it used all its power. That's the second beast. To force the earth to do what, brethren? To force the earth and its people to worship that beast. So the first beast is going to take control of the second beast. That is why we have to break it down. So that you can understand what the mark of the beast is. This is the message for our time. This is the message for our time. People of Melbrook Heights. People of, of Harbor View. This is the message for our time. And your time is running out. Watch this. Let's plug in everything. What is a beast? It's a kingdom. It's a kingdom or a government. Daniel 7 verse 17. Horns represents powers. These are horns. The horns are within the beast. They dwell within the beast. And so Jamaica would be the beast. And a compound would be the horn. Yes. A power within a power. Heads also means rulers yes these are the different stages of a beast are the different rulers within a beast the bible says in daniel that one beast was a leopard and that leopard represent greece and after alexander died which was the first horn the bible says four heads came up which represent the four generals that came up after alexander the great and each one of them ruled in different ways so it's the different stages the different rulership styles that exist within the beast water represents populated area a place where holy uh, water represents a holy people nation kindred tongues and people earth is the opposite of that an area where there's not much people. Amen, church? Am I going too fast? All right. We are going quickly. It says, um, woman represents what now, church? The church. A corrupt woman represents what? A corrupt church. A, 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 a righteous woman represents God's church. And we see the difference between uh, Revelation 12, which is the righteous church, and Revelation 17, which is the corrupt church, the mother of harlots, the Bible says, which is a description of the papacy. And out of the papacy came all the rest of churches. Now, brothers and sisters, as I said before and continue to say, there are many people that are in these churches that when they died, they will be resurrected. But if you hear the message of God's commandments, the truth, the application of God's commandments in these times, and you reject it, and, and you reject his holy Sabbath, he will not wink at that. He will not wink at that. Because this truth was hidden for years, for centuries, for millenniums. And the Bible says, light has no come. Truth has no come. And so it is up to you now to accept it. Because guess what? We can resist. Let me tell you something, visitors. You can resist all you want. When Jesus' kingdom come, it is people who subject themselves to the word of God, to the law of God that will enter in. Not people who will dictate and tell God what they want. And that means that God's Sabbath will be kept in that kingdom too. So you have to get used to it. So we can get vexed all we want. All we want. Yes. So we plug in everything now. Days equal years. Numbers 14.34. Ezekiel 4 and verse 6. And so the Bible tells us brothers and sisters. That the little horn of Daniel 7 and 8. The beast power that comes up out of the sea. In Revelation 13. And subsequently Revelation 14. 
is the Roman papacy. It is very clear. It is the only organization that has killed, persecuted, and, 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 and radically killed Christians and people who did not agree with them for such a long time. It was called the Dark Ages. It was over 1,200 years. Some people estimated at 1,500 years. But the Bible is very specific that it lasted for 2,600 Two th sorry, 1,260 years. The Bible tells us that it got a deadly wound by France in 1798. And that deadly wound is being healed now by Pope Francis and the popes that were before him. The healing is taking place right now as we speak tonight. We are going to show you when the wound will be completely healed. So... The papacy is there. And what? why is the Bible speaking about the papacy so much? Because the doctrines, the teachings of the papacy are worldwide. Worldwide. Everybody is accepting the, the papacy's teachings and they don't even know it. Even governments accept the, paper, the, the papal teachings. Rome's te the, uh, there's a saying that says, all road lead to what? Lead from where? From Rome. Everything. Yes? So, brothers and sisters, it's very clear. And what is its mark? They, they tell you themselves. They say Sunday is our mark of authority. It's a mark of what? Authority. So the issue of the last days is about what? Authority. You think they're going to come out on TV or come out on TVJ or international TV and say, Sunday is our mark and if you keep it, you follow it. You think they're going to do that? No. No. They're going to use psychs. They're going to use underlying language. The Bible says in Daniel 8.23 that they understand dark sentences. Which means they will use deceptive words wonderful words and everybody's going to accept it you know what they said they said that sunday has been in place for such a long time over the period for centuries that when people actually come to the realization that it is not god's holy sabbath it is very difficult for them to break off because it is in them for so long so, it says, Sunday is our mark of authority. The Bible, the church is above the Bible. And this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. The issue in the last days, Melbrook Heights. The issue in the last days, Orion Avenue. Is about God's Sabbath versus Sunday. That's what it's going to be in the last days. And that's what we are trying to teach you now before it happens. Because when it happens, that are too late. Half of you is going to be too late. This kind of setup that we have here, we won't be able to do it after this happens. And when you are saying, this is not going to happen. Well, COVID happened, didn't it? COVID happened. And you never thought that COVID could happen. And greater things are going to come. More pestilence is going to come. More wickedness is going to come. And they're going to push this. It's about God's Sabbath. And I know that it is not being discussed now. But the time will come where there's going to be a change. I'm going to show you. Now, here we see the Bible tells us of this beast power that comes up from the earth. Comes up from where? The earth. Let's look at it now. Revelation 13. When you read the book Revelation 13, this earth beast is described from revelation 13 from verse 11 to 17 when you go home you read it all right we're not going to go through all of it but we're just going to summarize the bible says and i beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns how many horns two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon now you pick up some things right there it comes from the earth. Mean it comes from an area that is not much populated. That's number one. Number two, it is run by two horns. Two principles guide this beast. We will look at those two principles. It is like a lamb. Meaning it's a Christian nation. Because the lamb represented who in the Bible? Christ himself. Behold the lamb of God that do what? 
take it away the sin of the world. So it's a Christian nation. But the Bible says that it speaks like a dragon. Who is the dragon in the Bible? Satan himself. So when a nation speaks, they speak through their laws. They speak through their what, brethren? Through their laws. Let me give you an example. When Uganda passed the homosexual law the other day, they were speaking, they were telling the world, we do not accept homosexuality. And if they, even, if they show them fears, if they go on like say they want to take over, we are going to kill them. They were speaking through their laws. So that's an example. So anytime a nation write a law, they are speaking. So it is like a lamb, Christian nation, but its laws will reflect like a dragon, like demons, like the devil himself. All right? So this is very important. All right? So let's go now. Uh, verses 12. Remember, this beast is described in Revelation 13, 11 to 17. So verse 12 tells us that this, I, we're not going to go through the very verse itself, but I'm just giving you a summary. It says that it will be the same system like the papacy. In other words, it started out as a Protestant nation, a Protestant Christian nation that was free, but it will be like the papacy. The Bible calls it the image of the beast, meaning it will reflect the same principles, the same doctrines, the same teachings, the same behavior like the papacy. All right? Verses 13 to 14 says, in this beast power, they, there are so many Christians, they are going to have what they call a false revival. The Bible says this beast is going to call down fire from heaven upon the people. What does that mean? doesn't mean literal fire. Because the Bible tells us that they represent miracles, signs, and wonders. Miracles, signs, and wonders. The same thing that happened at Mount Carmel will happen in this nation. What happened at Mount Carmel? Elijah came up to Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal came up to Mount Carmel. What did Elijah say? You go first. You set up your altar first. And what did the Bible say? Then went up and then danced on the altar and then do all sorts of things. Did fire come down at that time? No. But the Bible says in these last days, this nation is going to bring a false revival a false holy ghost how do i know it's the holy ghost because the bible says that in the days when when they uh on the day of pentecost the bible says that fire came down from heaven upon the disciples who did the fire represent the holy spirit the, um, john the baptist says we will be baptized with fire from the holy ghost so this is going to be a false revival through miracles signs wonders and it will revive the catholic principles that it accepted from the roman church and so there's going to be a false revival breaking out for all sorts of miracles and by the way just like mount carmel that will happen first the false revival will happen first and then the true revival will happen when after just like in the time of uh, of elijah when they went up and then ball no fire but what did Elijah do? Simple prayer. Set up in altar. Simple prayer. Fire come down. In these last days, this beast is going to bring a false revival. And through this false revival, Sunday worship will be exalted, will be revived, and it will become a force to be reckoned. It will, they will call for Sunday worship to be enforced upon the world so as to lift up God and to bring back God into the politics, to bring back God into the government, to bring back God into the society and to say that because of the great destruction, because a lot of climate change is going to take place. Much destruction from wind and storm and fire. Did, haven't you seen it in Canada? We saw it in California. We are seeing it all over. They are going to say God needs to come back. And so there's going to be a false revival from verse 13 to 14. Yes, in verse 15 to 17, the mirrored Roman, the mirrored Catholicism that this beast power is going to exhibit will lead to the enforcement of Sunday by law. And this is going to go into the Bible says you won't be able to buy 
and sell. And the Bible says it will eventually lead to death, to the death penalty. So you will be punished, you will be fined, economic sanctions and restrictions, persecution is going to come upon the world. And it will start from this be uh, this beast power and it will extend to the world because it is a superpower it is a superpower so here we see brothers and sisters right now this is happening as we speak this nation is leading and the rest even if you don't like the nation here even if you don't like it you have to admit that this nation is the most powerful nation in the world the bible says the united states will be the last superpower before jesus come there will be no other superpower like this superpower this superpower this sign tells us that jesus is about to come because the bible says this is the last superpower after that the, the mega superpower are going to come. Which is Jesus Christ's kingdom himself. This power will not be destroyed by anybody. The papacy will not be destroyed by anybody. Only Jesus' kingdom will destroy it. Only Jesus' kingdom. And so the Bible says that the papacy will take control of this country. Of this beast power. Now we all know, brothers and sisters, that the United States is the most powerful nation. It is the most powerful military. The economy is the most powerful economy. And this economy affects every nation upon the earth. Its culture is the most powerful across the world. It influences more nation than any other nation, brothers and sisters. It is the superpower of our time. And it has been so for the last 200 years, or the last 100 odd years. This superpower. Yes? Right? I mean, come on, brethren. We all know anything will happen in the United States affect everybody. Anything will go on in the United States affect Jamaica. Yes? I remember, I remember in 2010. You remember 2010 when they wanted to do this? Mm. When they want to do this, and we hear people, we hear politicians coming out. We are defending human rights. What did America say? Send him come. And send him come now. We are his dudus now. Right in the United States. They went to Panama. And they invaded Panama. And took Noriega. This is the only power that we have um, United States Army base right across the world. And then can mobilize as soon as you say who that. As soon as you say who that. As a matter of fact, they are so powerful. Right now, you might never know. You might have all um, um, CIA operatives right here tonight. Right here, so tonight. They are in the government. They are everywhere. Who can tell the United States what to do? When George Bush was going down to Iraq, hmm? Well, uh, uh, the United Nations said, no, you can't do that because human rights and Ray and Ray and Ray. What did George Bush say? We're giving you 72 hours, boss. And we're coming for you in shock and awe. And by the time you're queen, I was in Mark Bay Fire Station when they invaded um, Iraq. By the time you're queen, bombs are dropped like nothing, brothers and sisters. And we have seen it time and time and time again look at what they did to haiti they were the ones who mash up haiti yes mash up haiti they can take on anybody that they want and they don't have to wait on the un when every other nation have to wait on the un and beg the un and this and that why you think israel now today as we speak is able to attack palestine because they are backed by who the united states the united states is the most powerful nation. Their GDP is over 27 trillion dollars. Trillion brothers and sisters. Me no, right now, me just, me just want 100,000. 100,000 US, I mean nice. 27 trillion brothers and sisters. Can you imagine if Jamaica have 27 trillion? We're not nice, brethren. We're not nice, man, forever. Huh? 
the most powerful nation it says look at this look at the power remember the bible says they will they will they will cause the world to be able not to be able to buy and sell through the digital system look at this the u.s is the only sanctioned superpower it must use that power wisely it is the only nation that can sanction nation right now um russia is under sanction and cuba yes Russia is the second or the third most powerful nation. And they sanction Russia when they're ready. Um, Joe, not Joe Biden. Um, Donald Trump sanction China almost to death. They sanction anybody who they want. And your economic life done. And we have seen it over and over and over. Look how long then they are Afghanistan. Almost 20 years. And then those are spend money. Those are spend money. Those are sp and they still never get what they want. Still never. The most powerful nation in the world. Listen. How did it all start? Remember what the Bible said. The Bible says that they came from the earth. You remember that, brethren? They came from the earth. Listen to what this article says. This article was issued in June 1963. Anybody born 1963? Anybody? Ah, church, church. I say yes. We born 1979, right? 1963. It says, shaped in the what, Lord? What is that word? Wilderness. What's a wilderness? Yes, it's a desert. It's a place where none of people are there. Yes? When Jesus was in the wilderness, was a whole of people there? No. The American. It says, is, this is written by Oscar Hand, uh, Handlin. He's an American historian. Listen to what he says. The pilgrims who came to Plymouth in 1620 were an unusual group. Mostly free men who paid their way with only a few servants among them. There was no settled population, just like what the Bible said. No settled population with which to trade or which to set to work. The country was inhabited by scattered in Indian tribes able to vanish swiftly into the wilderness. So it was a beer wasteland. Yeah, no Wolipa people never did it. Just like what the Bible says. The, 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 the Puritans came over from Europe to America because they were fleeing from persecution. They were fleeing from what, brethren? Persecution. And that is where they found solace, where they found freedom. That's why he talked about the pilgrims. In 1620, you had the ship called the Mayflower that came to, to Massachusetts, right? This, that's why the Bible says, that's, let me tell you, man, the Bible can't run in a brethren. The Bible can't run in a Listen to this. It says, Revelation 12, 16. But the earth, who is the earth? The United States. The earth came to help the woman. Who is the woman? The church. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured out from its mouth. Meaning persecution. The dragon representing the devil. But the dragon represents also the states and the countries and the governments in Europe that were persecuting the Christians. And those were the people that were used by the Vatican to persecute these people because they did not believe the same things that they believed. So they escaped from Europe and come over to the United States. Yes? The, in some translation it says, well, it says there, the river. Some say it's flowing river. It means persecution. Yes, persecution. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get some sound now. I want, to, I want some sound now, my sister. Could you, could you give me some sound now? I'm going to play this, 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 um, this video for you. And this is describing, these historians are describing the Puritans that came to America. And I want you to listen very carefully as to why they were persecuted. There are some words that you need to listen out for. Because we talked about these words before. Listen to what it says here now. It's worth reminding ourselves that at the time they were a very, very small group of very extreme people. And if we'd never heard of them ever again, Hold on. A very small group of what kind of people? Extreme people. All right. Go on. Nobody would be surprised. And most English people thought that they were well rid of them. 
The fact that they are in the long term extraordinarily successful, that they found the world's greatest democracy, throws retrospective luster. They are, one might say, if you wanted to be critical, they're religious nutters who won't settle for anything except the most literal reading of the Bible. They want to transform a nation state into something that resembles what they take to be a godly kingdom. Notice, you know what you hear what she say? She says they are extreme, they are radical, and they will accept nothing except what? A direct interpretation of the Bible. A literal interpretation of the Bible. By the way, isn't that what is called extremist today? Yes. So if you believe that God created the world in six days and rested literally on the seventh, you're an extremist. You're an extremist. If you believe, brothers and sisters, that God created male and female, you're an extremist. By the way, let me ask you a question. For the last going two, three weeks now, haven't we been looking at a literal interpretation of the Bible? Yes, so what they would call me then? An extremist. And you were are listening, an extremist too. You're an extremist. Remember what Pope Francis says. Those who keep the law unbendingly are sick and in need of the Lord's help. So you're radical if you keep God's law. You see where we are talking about, brethren? They were under persecution. So is it coming back again? Absolutely. Visitors, let me, let me, let me move on. Talking about the United States, one of the most powerful things that made the United States powerful was its declaration of independence. By the way, today is what? Independence Day. Yes? You know, let me tell you something, visitors. You know, I know that God is in this. I know that God is in this, you know. When I was preparing these presentations, Pastor, Pastor, when I was preparing these presentations, I did not know the dates that were set out. I just prepared. I didn't set up and say, okay, today I'm going to be Independence Day, so let me do one sermon about the United States. I did not know. As a matter of fact, it's when I was putting things together, I realized that today are the fourth. That's why I know that God's providence is in this. Because God wants me to talk about this today. Today. So, when we cut, look here. Visitors, those of you who go to church on Sunday and think say Advent is a cause of Sunday people and all sort of stuff. Look here. I don't come here to come and mix up and do all these things because I want to get your vex. I want you to accept Jesus. I wouldn't come out here just to talk about these things so that you can get vex. I want to get her and Ray and the world we cuss. I'm not done with that. I am here for truth. I'm here for truth. And we must stop acting like you know how hell feel. Because no, no, we don't know how hell feel in our brethren. So we can all talk and make up our whole nice and do all sort of stuff. I am here to bring you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Every time. Look here. No matter what you're going to say to me. When you go back. To your pastors and your churches they will not be able to explain what i am explaining to you tonight and for the last two weeks they are not going to be able to explain it to you they're going to say oh we are extremists and we are this and we are that and the lord done away with and all sort of nonsense all sort of nonsense but i'm going to show you tonight brothers and sisters visiting friends that i love me love you god loves you and he wants to save you from sin. And the only reason why you get so much chance now is because grace is taking place now. Listen to this. The Declaration of Independence was issued in July, on July 4th, 1776. That is when they were breaking off from, from, from England. England was, was, under the, uh, was controlling them. And they wanted to break away from England. So this happened as they, and they had their internal fights and so on and so forth. Because it wasn't 51 states. It was just 13 American colonies. And they broke up and they broke up and they broke up and so on and so forth. But eventually, they had what they call the United States of America. 
Yes, the civil war and all of these things took place. But they had their declaration. They declared on July 4th, 1776. One of the documents, of course, one of the main documents that they had was the Constitution of America. They wanted the Constitution to be different than any document. Because they knew what happened in Europe. They knew that church and state came together and persecuted people and took away their freedom. They did not want that. So people like Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, George Washington and these people, they came together and they constructed what we call the American Constitution. And they gave them what they call the Bill of Rights, the amendments to the Constitution. And the first amendment had to do with religion. With what, brethren? religion because they knew that if you did not give the people freedom if you did not separate the church from the state you're going to have the same thing that happened in europe and you're going to have the same thing like the papacy so what did the bill of rights say the first one the first amendment was um, was this congress who is congress people and we make laws congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion are prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That's why in America, you can set up one Satan church and nobody can stop you. Nobody can stop you. And then can shut you down. It says, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. So basically, you can say anything where you want. Or the right of the people peaceably to assemble. And to petition the government for a redress of grievances. In other words, when you look at the Constitution of America, it is the people who rule. It is the people that put the government there. And that's why one of the amendments says they can bear arms. What that mean? They can take up gun. Why? Because they don't want the government to get them kind of powers there. For rule over the people. So if they think that the government will turn like, like, like Saddam Hussein and um, Adolf Hitler and Mussolini, the people can rise up and take up arms and defend themselves against the government. Are we clear on that, brethren? Watch this. The United States is a republic. It's a what? Republic. It's different from a democracy. Let me explain. A democracy is dangerous. These founding fathers figured that out. Let me tell you why it is dangerous. Because me your people are gasped. What? At that you say, Berkey? Let me explain. Before you take up stone, slap me. A democracy and a republic is two different things. A democracy, democracy came from Greece. In a pure democracy, the majority rules over the minority in a republic the majority does get what they want but then can use them powers to suppress the minority in other words if the majority say them are go left and you out of the majority say no me i go right the constitution of america say you can go right and then can stop you and they then can't do you nothing. This is important because if you believe differently, the constitution protect you. So the majority can't say you have to do what we do, or force you to do what you know want to do. Even if you alone I do it, that is very important. Because what God wants you to think freely, and that was one of the things that come out in the pandemic. Anytime you see people are going to hoard thinking, in our group thinking, dangerous. Dangerous. You must learn. I must learn. We must learn. Visitors, you must learn to stand by yourself. When time you see people are going in that direction, they think first. Why is everybody going in that direction? The American Constitution allow you to think. And to say, no, I don't want to do that. Praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that. Listen, and they knew this because anytime the church get control of the government, that will be thrown out through the window. 
That is why James Madison says, he's one of the founding fathers. He says, the purpose of separation of church and state is to keep forever from these shores the ceaseless strife that has soaked the soil of Europe with blood for centuries. He knew that. They knew that. So, did they believe in church and state separation? Yes, they did that. Why? Because they knew what the papacy was. Look at what Thomas, um, Thomas Jefferson said. He says, erecting the wall of separation. Erecting what? Wall. What's a wall? Yes, it's a barrier. Yeah. Erecting the wall of separation between church and state is absolutely essential in a free society. And a true, a true, anytime the church get involved with the state, the church take over the state and use the state to persecute those who do not agree with it. You can see the same thing in places like Samoa. Samoa is basically run by the Methodist church and then use the government to push for them thing. Yeah, that, 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 that's no, that no new stuff. You look at Poland, look at Russia. Russia is all you hear Putin are going, you know. It is the Orthodox Church that run Russia, you know. It's the Orthodox Church that run Russia in Poland. The Catholic Church runs Poland. And by the way, don't fool yourself, you see. Even if I know the church wants religion. And the church come together are the same thing. So let us look at, say, India. Which religion run India? Hinduism. Who is the prime minister? Narendra Modi. Is he a Hindu? Yes. Look at his policies. Most of his policies is in Hindu. Is Hinduism. Him a push. Him push yoga and all of them kind of stuff. Don't fool yourself. China is the same thing. China is the same thing. North Korea is the same thing. They, they do not believe in the God of the Bible, but they believe in a God. They believe in Confucius and all these things. And so many of the things that they do is the same thing. Church and state, brothers and sisters. So don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. They knew that this was going to be a problem. Look at North Korea. Look at China. Yeah, it's the same thing, brothers and sisters. Look at this. And by the way, because they knew this, the Vatican knew what America stood for. And so they infiltrated America from early. Remember what the Bible says. The Bible says that the second beast work for the first beast. Which means if the second beast are going to work for the first beast, it means say the second beast, the, the first beast employ him. I'm boss. So if I'm boss, he must have control over him. Does that make sense, brethren? In other words, the Vatican must control, Rome must control, Pope must control the United States. That's exactly what has happened from the early days. Men like Abraham Lincoln knew what was coming. Look at what he says regarding the civil war, the war between the North and the south listen to what he says this war would never have been possible without the sinister influence of who the jesuits he was the president at the time and he knew that he says we owe it to what is that word popery that we is, we now see our land redden with the blood of her noblest sons he knew what was coming? By the way, and when he said that, what happened to him? What happened to him, brethren? Hmm? John F. Kennedy said the same thing. John F. Kennedy was a Roman Catholic. By the way, as me say, there are many, many Roman Catholics that will be saved in the kingdom. Many and many Adventists will be lost. JFK said this. He said, I don't want any church pastor, any church minister to come into the government and tell the president what to do, where to do, how to do. He, and just as he said that, what happened to him? What happened to, John, to JFK? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying at them, but it looks strange. 
It looks strange, brethren. It looks strange. Hmm? And as they infiltrated the United... And by the way, one of the ways that they infiltrated the United States was a thing through immigration. A thing they call what? Immigration. Many Irish Catholics came over. Many Polish Catholics, they came over. Do you not notice that Joe Biden spends a lot of time talking about immigration? And that the border must be open. Pope Francis said you must open the borders to the poor. And this and that. You know why? You know why? Let me tell you something, uh, visitors. The northern side of the United States. Who are these countries? Mexico, Panama, El Salvador, Honduras, Colombia, El Salvador. The south, sorry, the south, the south part. Many of these countries, most of them are what? Roman Catholic countries. Ardent. Thank you very much for that word, sister. Ardent Roman Catholic. So when you open the border, who are going to come up there? No spears Roman Catholic are come. Hmm? By the way, they control a lot of the Congress. Six of the, of the nine Supreme Court judges are Roman Catholics. The CIA is run by Roman Catholics. As a matter of fact, the CIA was started by a Roman Catholic. What is the acronym for the CIA? Central Intelligence Agency. The Roman Catholics have taken over the CIA so much that it is now called Catholic Intelligence Agency. Because they take it over. Where are the best schools in the, um, in the, in the world? In the United States. Uh, the best schools in the United States are which ones? Catholic schools. And they are run by Jesuits. Yes? So, wait, look here. Virgin. And they, they have infiltrated. Look at this. When John D. Roosevelt was president, he wanted an ambassador to the Vatican. And the American people said, no! We don't want that. Because what? We don't want church and state. And when Ronald Reagan came on the scene... He changed that and he linked up with the papacy and brought down communism. Remember what Malachi Martin said in the book Keys of This Blood. He said there are three ideologies that run the world at that time. Communism, Catholicism, and capitalism, which is the United States. And what did he, what did he say? Rome will win. What Rome did was to link up with America and attack communism and bring down communism that's exactly what they did yes history may I tell you brothers and sisters history may I tell you so this is this is what is happening right now by the way where did this go the pope himself came to congress this should not have happened this should not have happened under the constitution of america this should not have happened. These two men, Joe Biden, he wasn't the president at that time. I think he, this man, um, Bear, he was the speaker of the house at the time. And Joe Biden, and they were the ones who were instrumental in bringing the Pope to America to address Congress of all places. Of all places, this should not have happened. So, has the Roman system taken over America? Absolutely. Nancy Pelosi is a Roman Catholic as well. Yes? People like, um, where the governor of the, the, the California name? Um, Gavin Newsom is also a Roman Catholic. The brother that down at, um, down at um, Florida, Randy Santos, is also a Roman Catholic. And by the way, some of them are good people. Because I believe Randy Sanders is, is trying to be a good governor. Yes? The governor of Fidona, Texas, is also Roman Catholic. And many of the people who, many of the mayors, many of the governors, they are Roman Catholics. And many of the most stringent mandates in COVID came from them. Mm -hmm. The church, on a silent, praise the Lord. Watch this. Moving on. Look at what happened with who, um, Donald Trump in Donald Trump's time you thought that he was anti-catholic no 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 he says 
National Catholic Breakfast hears call for Catholic Great Awakening. Listen to what Malvini says. The principles of our Catholic faith are alive and well and well respected in this administration and are driving many of our what? Policies. This is in a Donald Trump time. So then take over. Then take over, brothers and sisters. And guess, of course, Joe Biden is a what? Roman Catholic. He's a Roman Catholic. And he says that his faith will drive many of his policies. So, is the second beast working for the first beast? Yes. Yes. It is happening right now as we speak. How powerful are they? Well, look at this. This is what happened recently. This is June 16, 2023. They, along with other religious groups, they protest and they shut down Dodger Stadium. Why? Because some, some, some LGBT people come up there and are dressed like nuns and are disrespect the Catholic faith. And what did they do? They rally everybody. They rally the troops, rally the institutions, and they protest and shut down Dodger Stadium. That are no simple powers. That are no simple powers. They are leading the charge in America. They are leading the charge, brothers and sisters. See? See them there? The LGBT and are going the most way. Then just come out and start to protest. And it was peaceful. It was peaceful. But they locked down the stadium. And this is not the first time. They did it. Their powers is, is, in, is beyond words, brothers and sisters. George Bush loved them like cooked food. Yes? They, as a matter of fact, let me go as far as to say... The Vatican also run um, the Freemason, Freemasonry. They run that. I noticed there's an article in the Observer trying to make Freemason look palatable. Hmm? Trying to make it look palatable. They run Freemasonry. They run Rosicrucianism and the secret societies in our world. So don't fool yourself. Them run the FBI, the UN. The Bible says they will take over every aspect of your life so don't fool yourself look here time is going let me move on brothers and sisters let me move on now as we bring this part we're going to bring it to a close remember the bible says there will be fire from this beast power who will bring the fire it is not the catholics that will bring the fire it is the protestants it is the evangelicals it is the christians who will bring the fire let me give you I'm going to give you um, some sound on this. Listen to this. This is this year. The BBC carried this. A powerful minority is on the rise with a particular vision of America. You cannot separate God from politics. You can't take him out of our government. It's one of the oldest and most influential currents in U.S. politics. But in a country deeply divided, the Christian right has found a new voice. We desire to live in a Judeo-Christian nation with Judeo-Christian values. It claims Christianity is under attack and that God belongs in government. With pastors preaching its message in churches and its beliefs guiding ultra-conservative candidates in the midterm elections. I'm a Christian and I say it proudly, we should be Christian nationalists. The movement is known to many as Christian nationalism, and the far right is taking it to the extreme. We are the Christian Taliban. Some are warning that this is fundamentally undemocratic. It was amplified by Donald Trump. We're going to protect Christianity, and I can say that. I don't have to be politically correct. Powered by his election loss, it broke cover at the storming of the Capitol on January 6 last year. You can't diminish what happened on January 6 from what's happening in some sanctuaries on Sunday morning. Their crusade is starting from the ground up and education is the front line. Our school board meetings have police officers at the meetings to escort people out who get too out of control. To understand this moment in U.S. politics, you have to understand this movement. I met people across the country who feel they're battling for the soul of America. So the Christian right is coming up and they will bring the fire they will bring the fire along they are going to work with the roman catholics 
to bring a false revival in the United States, brothers and sisters. You remember the woman that you saw with the cowboy hat? This is, this is her, Bo, Bo, Bo Bart. She says she's tired of separation between church and state. The church is supposed to do what? Direct the government. Adesa de Mago. Adesa de Mago. This is popery. This is popery. Yes? This, thank you very much. This is the woman riding the beast, brothers and sisters. I see the same behavior with our government down here in, uh, in Jamaica. Linking up with the, with the, with the, with, with the Roman system. Eh? Watch this. Look here. This is what... This is very... As I'm, this is June 29th. The Supreme Court made a decision regarding a man on Sunday. The uh, um, Amazon wanted him to deliver um, packages on Sunday. And he said, no, that is against my constitutional right. And he took it to court and he took it to the Supreme Court. Now tell me something, brethren. If you have six Catholic on the Supreme Court and a nine of them, you know things he must win. He must win. He must win, brothers and sisters. So we're going right there. We're going right there. The mark of the beast is setting up. And here today, this is concerning July 4th. Look at this. We begin tonight with tens of millions of Americans on alert for devastating storms and dangerous heat on the eve of the 4th of July holiday. A severe thunderstorm watch is now in effect along the East Coast. Powerful storms rolling up from the Carolinas to the Northeast. Heavy rain, damaging winds and hail, along with possible tornadoes. In Pennsylvania, at least three reported tornadoes just since yesterday. Buildings and cars damaged in Union County. At the same time, the West is under a brutal heat wave with excessive heat warnings in effect for several states. Firefighters in Washington state battling the Tunnel 5 fire in the Columbia River Gorge. Ten homes destroyed, 250 at risk. And take a look at today's heat index. Triple digits from Texas to Virginia. Possible record temperatures in the southeast tomorrow. There are mounting concerns about how the airlines will hold up as they face record holiday travel, further compounded by last week's massive cancellations. ABC's Stephanie Ramos leads us off. Tonight, severe weather causing headaches for millions on the eve of the July 4th holiday. 37 million Americans on the East Coast under severe storm watches tonight, from New York to North Carolina. If you're at the beach, grab everything and head inside. Powerful bands of rain, wind, and hail rolling into the region. Over the weekend, the same system bringing dangerous flash flooding to Chicago, prompting water rescues. Nine inches falling in just a matter of hours. More rainfall than the city saw in the past two months combined. Cars stranded. Homes and businesses like this flower shop inundated. It looks around like 10 to 12 feet right now of water. Multiple tornadoes tore through central Pennsylvania Sunday, one shearing off the roof of this store. All of a sudden, I've seen the trees break off over there, flying through the air. And in North Carolina, this driver thankful to have escaped unharmed when a tree fell onto her car as storms swept through the area. This, as blistering temperatures persist across the south and west. 13 states under heat alerts, heat indices over 100 degrees on both coasts, even the typically temperate Pacific Northwest. No, you know what they're going to say? Cl ah, climate change. One section of Bundong, <laughs> the other section of Washdong. They're going to say climate change. What did poor Francis say must be given, must be done in order to solve climate change? Sunday rest. Sunday rest. And they are going to call for that. Listen, brothers and sisters, we're closing off now. This is Bishop Arlan. He, was, he came to America in the 1800s. Listen to what he says. This was the plan from long time. Our work is to make America what? Catholic. And our hearts shall leap toward it with crusader enthusiasm. As I close, look here. I love you the same way if you know I'll come back tomorrow. Me love you the same way. But after tonight, me sleep well. I sleep well. 
I sleep well. Tonight I'm not even going to make a long appeal. Because of your salvation. I beg nobody to give their hearts to Jesus. Jesus is wonderful already. So you must decide what is this is coming upon us. It will start in America and it will spread to the world. Pastor, listen to look at what Abraham Lincoln said, and then me done. Let's read it together. I see a very dark cloud on America's horizon. And that cloud is coming from where? Rome. And look how long that man did. And he see what was coming. And if America comes under the control of the papacy, the wound would have been healed. And they will use this power to persecute everybody starting from the United States. And it will spread to the entire world. Because the world will follow the United States. They will lead out and the world will follow. Are we close to that time? Yes, we are. So tonight, Brother Garden, play something for us. We're going to finish off now. Praise the Lord. Was tonight's message a blessing to your heart? Those of you online, if you like what you heard, mm. if you love what you heard, smash that like button. And preach. Preach the message by sending the link to your friends. Sending the link to your brothers and sisters. I love you. I love you. You will never hear any preaching like this in any other place. God has been good. And tonight... I pray that your heart was blessed. Brethren, tonight, I appeal to somebody. I'm not going to stay very long. Tonight, I'm asking you to come to Jesus. Come and let me pray with you. As this peace power, they collaborate to come. To persecute everybody on the face of the earth. You can get ready to meet Jesus. You can get ready to meet God. He's preparing a people that is ready to meet him at his second coming. You can do that right now. And he says, before all of this break out, you can accept me as Lord and Savior before it is eternally too late. I appeal to the hearts of the people tonight. I appeal to you, my visitors. Will you come and shake at least the preacher's hand? Come and shake the preacher's hand and let me pray with you so that the Spirit of God can begin the process of change right now. He's calling our people to keep his commandments, to keep his word, to keep his law. You can be a Daniel. You can be a Joseph. You can be a tree, the three Hebrew boys. And more importantly, you can be like Jesus. So tonight, is there somebody here tonight who would love for me to pray with them that the Spirit of God will start the work of transformation right now? Will you come now, brothers and sisters, visiting friends? Will you come resist the spirit of demons? Resist the discouragement right now and take a walk for Jesus. Take a walk and accept his word. Accept his truth at this time. America is working with the papacy to bring about a trial, a time of trouble that we have never seen before. Tomorrow, we are going to talk about spiritualism, spiritism, and how it is going to play a big role in the last days. God wants to save you. He wants to remove the deception from your eyes. Is there somebody here tonight? Who will come and say, Preacher, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me, preacher. I've never heard this before, and it finally makes sense to my understanding. I want you to pray with me. Is there somebody here tonight who will come? You're a visitor. Brethren, could you stand to your feet? I'm gonna send you, I'm gonna finish off now. Because I'm not gonna make a long appeal. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna wait now. Is there anybody who would like to come? Come, let's pray together. Let's ask the Spirit of God to come into your heart and to make a transformation. To begin 
your conviction to begin your conversion right now right now the process is beginning right now is there somebody here who will respond to the spirit of god is there one tonight is there one who will say yes to jesus and will say i am brave enough i'm gonna be brave enough i'm not gonna resist the spirit anymore is there one tonight is there one tonight coming home coming home is there one tonight Open wide, open wide, thine arms of Lord, I'm coming home. All right, we're going to pray right now. We're going to pray right now. We're going to ask the Spirit of God to do His work. Angels of mercy, Lord, I have done my best tonight again. I know, dear God, that what you have shared with us tonight is truth. Jesus, you are in the heavenly sanctuary. And you are examining the hearts of the people right now, those that are looking on. Lord, tonight I ask that your spirit will have mercy upon the people. Send angels to back back the forces of darkness. I pray tonight, dear God, that you will empower somebody. Lord, I know that hearts were touched. I know that hearts, dear Lord, they felt that this was a difficult message. They felt that this was a hard message. Lord, I did not preach tonight to get anybody upset. I did not preach last night to get anybody upset. But Lord... How can we see these truths and not disseminate them? How can we see the truths for these last days and not share it with the people? You said in your word, whether they hear or forbear, whether in season or out of season, we are to preach the gospel. So tonight, Lord, I think I have done my best. I pray that you will do the rest. And I pray God... That the seed that has been planted. I pray God that it will be a fruit. Time is running out Jesus. Time is running out. Melbrook Heights don't have a lot of time. Harborview don't have a lot of time. And Lord I know. That you have done this through your providence. You have marked this spot. A long time ago. And you have set it up. So that we can reach the people and so tonight lord i pray i pray in the name of jesus those who have not moved lord have mercy upon them have mercy upon their souls and lord bring conviction to their understanding i know that many of them are waiting for this to happen but lord we all know that that will be too late so lord anoint their eyes, dear Lord, that they may see the things that are happening and run to you before it is eternally too late. Be with us, dear Lord, as a people. Be with our pastor, Pastor Clark. Bless his family. Lord, we don't want to be a castaway doing all of this work and yet we too are lost. So Lord, we are praying that you will have mercy upon us as brethren. We pray, dear God, that this will be the starting of great things to come. It might not be looking too good now. But Lord we are praying dear Jesus. Because the hard work has been done. Lord we are praying. That your spirit will take over. And there will be a great multitude that will come to the truth by and by. Bless those that are online. And I pray God. That they too dear Jesus. Will embrace the truth for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say.